Hey, what's going on guys, Uptish here. Welcome back to the channel. So, after months of delay, lots of rumors, speculations, drama, AMD has finally unveiled their latest generation of RDNA 4 graphics cards, that is the 9070 and the 9070 XT. Folks, it is a pretty dire time to be a PC gamer with like poor value for money in terms of GPUs. GPUs straight up not available for purchase. So we often say that AMD never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. But it seems like AMD has finally delivered. So in this video, let's take a look at what AMD has in store for us with RDNA 4. With that said, let's get going. Okay, I won't make this video too long. AMD unveiled two GPUs, the 9070 and 9070XT. There is no 9060 or no 9070XTX and all that stuff. 9070 and 9070XT. 9070 costs 550 US dollars, whereas 9070 XT costs 600 US dollars. So right off the bat, I'm not even going to waste time talking about the 9070 non XT for 550 US dollars. It's going to be the same cost as the RTX 5070 and at just $50 cheaper than the 9070 XT, it does not make any sense. It's basically the same situation as the RX 7700 XT compared to the RX 7800 XT. Basically, what I mean to say is that the 9070 just doesn't make sense to me. Just $50 cheaper, you rather just spend the $50 extra and just go for the 9070 XT. So let's talk about the 9070 XT. All right, so the 9070 XT, according to AMD, is around 37% faster than the, uh, than the 7900GRE from RDNA 3. So 37% faster restoration performance, that is a pretty amazing gen on gen improvement like at least by modern graphics card standards, because you see what's uh, what NVIDIA is doing, basically like, you know, giving us like 10, 15% of improvement, whereas AMD is giving us 37% improvement gen on gen in terms of raw rasterization performance. So basically the 9070 XT is 37% faster than the 7900 GRA. And in terms of ray tracing performance, the 9070 XT, like these are according to AMD's first party benchmark, so probably cherry picked. But, you know, I tend to trust AMD, like most of the time they don't, you know, just uh, you know lie in these benchmarks. So they pretty much tend to be spot on. So let's just assume these benchmarks are, you know, true. And uh, in, terms of, in terms of ray tracing performance, the uh, 9070 XT is 53% faster than the uh, 7900 GRE. So that's a huge improvement in terms of ray tracing performance. So overall, in terms of performance, like you saw, it's a really big improvement over the 7900 GRE. Now, according to AMD, they also claim that the 9070 XT is basically on par with the 5070 Ti uh, in terms of rasterization performance and also on, on par with the 5070 Ti in terms of ray tracing performance, which is pretty crazy to be honest. And basically AMD is claiming that, you know, because it's $150 cheaper than the 5070 Ti, it is providing around 23% greater, uh, you know, value for money improvement. Now, the thing is, uh, again, these are first party benchmarks. If you are to assume that the 9070 XT is actually 53% uh, faster than the uh, 7900 GRE, then if we you know, apply these benchmark, like these percentage differences to the benchmark numbers recorded by hardware and box, then you would see that no, the 9070 XT is definitely not on par with the 5070 Ti in terms of ray tracing performance. In fact, the 9070 XT is more like, you know, little bit slower than the RTX 4070 Super or it's going to be on par or like on par basically you can say and it's going to be slower than the 5070. So that's the so that's what you know I can speculate if I look at AMD's numbers and I compare it with whatever hardware unbox has recorded. Whereas in terms of restoration performance which is like quite important like I would personally argue like in this class of GPUs the restoration performance is still more important than ray tracing performance uh, and even in there like AMD claims 37% improvement in terms of raw restoration performance. So that would put the uh, 9070 XT just slightly below the 5070 Ti, uh, which is pretty much spot on. That's what AMD is claiming. It's just that ray tracing performance looks pretty exaggerated, or it is possible that 9070 XT or like AMD has caught up to Nvidia in terms of ray tracing performance. Because to be honest, the RTX 5000 series did not receive any improvement, whether it is ray tracing or rasterization performance. The architecture is just very much focused on AI. 
so that there's where all the improvements are but in terms of raw racing performance or ray tracing performance the 50 series is just barely any upgrade over the 40 series so you can say that the uh, you know performance improvement with the 50 series is basically stalled in case of nvidia which uh, you know left room or an opportunity for amd to make a comeback and they probably have make uh, like made a comeback like they are claiming the 50 like the 9070 xt is on par with the 5070 ti in terms of ray tracing performance which is pretty crazy like you know like if i apply these percentage differences to hardware unbox numbers then it doesn't make sense but amd says it's on par so yeah it's all up to you know whenever the final third party you know reviews will be up coming up so that's when we'll all come to know but what's really undeniable is that the 9070 xt for 600 us dollars indeed has brought about really good you know value for money improvements compared to what nvidia is providing us you know the thing is that uh like like i said in the beginning like you know um, amd is well known for you know never missing an opportunity to miss an opportunity but in this case like Nvidia, it feels like Nvidia doesn't even want to sell anything to gamers. Like, not only did they not improve the 50, 50 series like substantially over the 40 series, like improvements are very lackluster. On top of that, the GPUs are not even available for purchase. If they are available for purchase, they are at incredibly excessive cost. Like, like MSRP is just uh, it doesn't exist basically. Uh, so. AMD like like I don't know like AMD had to make a colossal misstep if they wanted to you know mess up this launch like Nvidia like they neither improved their architecture much for ray tracing nor for rasterization performance neither the GPUs are available if the GPUs are available they are they are they are at a extremely inflated cost so AMD basically had everything to win they couldn't have messed it up now there is still a chance to mess up this launch because like just like the 5070 Ti, uh, AMD doesn't have any reference model for the 9070 or the 9070 XT. Everything will be up to the board partners and AIB models and so let's hope that the supply is in abundance and probably it is in abundance because we've been hearing in, like rumors that uh, you know retailers have a lot of stock for these GPUs. Uh, so. Hopefully, if these GPUs will be available readily for purchase at 600 US dollars, then I think this is AMD's moment. AMD is going to gain a lot of uh, market share. Like I, I, at least I hope so. It's a win-win situation for AMD. All they have to ensure that the stock is in abundance and the AIBs are not outrageously pricing these cards. Okay, MSRP is maintained. Apart from these impressive gains in rasterization performance as well as ray tracing performance, uh, AMD has also claimed that they have improved their H.264 encoding quality by 20%. The streaming community has asked us for encoding quality improvements for popular services like Twitch, YouTube, and Discord. And RDNA 4 delivers major improvements across H.264, H.265, and AV1. When using our H.264 encoder at 6,000 kilobits per second, we are seeing up to 20% higher VMAF quality scores versus our previous generation. So they didn't talk about much, but AMD's uh, hardware encoding solution for H.264 specifically is really bad. Like, I don't know they ever improved it. Like, I don't see, I never saw AMD like actually improve the H.264, you know, hardware encoding quality. Uh, AMD has been significantly behind Nvidia as well as Intel in terms of their media uh, encoding performance. So basically, you know, H.264, H.265. H.265 for AMD was still good, but H.264 for AMD has been really, really poor. Okay. And still a lot of, um, you know, platforms, especially like Twitch, they are st they only still allow you to stream over H.264, you know, and that was the weakness for AMD. So they claim that they have improved their uh, encoding performance. So they claim that uh, at 6,000 kilobits per second, they are getting a better, like 20% better image quality. So that's that's a good thing. Although one thing that they did not mention, and I didn't read about it, maybe we will come to know in the coming months. Uh, for example, Nvidia added a pretty critical you know um, decoding media media decoding engine uh, to the uh, rtx 50 series that is now nvidia gpus the rtx 50 series will be able to decode h265 10-bit 422 footage okay codec this 
this particular codec is very popular for mirrorless cameras especially if you want to shoot uh, uh, 60 fps videos or 10 bit videos uh, they are generally shot at in this uh, very hard to edit codec that is HEVC or H265 uh, 10 bit 422 and only Intel's iGPU 11 gen and above iGPU were able to you know decode it you know they had hardware acceleration for this codec and basically if you wanted to edit this codec and you wanted smoother performance you had to rely on Intel's iGPU so you basically needed an Intel dedicated GPU or an Intel CPU to get access to this uh, hardware acceleration uh, so NVIDIA finally added this codec support to their RTX 50 series. We haven't heard anything as such from AMD on this. So probably AMD hasn't added the support. So that's one thing. And the final thing that I want to talk about is FSR4. FSR4 is AMD's first machine learning based upscaling uh, algorithm or technique. Uh, which is similar to DLSS. DLSS also relies on AI hardware and so does AMD's FSR4. And this is going to be big. Nvidia announced DLSS4 using the transformer model and it is incredible. I'm trying to make a video on it, but I'm just not getting the time. But uh, Nvidia's uh, uh, DLSS4 using the transformer model is just, just amazing. Like you can basically play at you know DLSS performance mode, especially at 1440p, and still get amazing image quality, uh, and that's a huge gain. Okay, uh, Nvidia's DLSS 3 is still really good. Like AMD's FSR like 3.1 is still significantly behind uh, Nvidia's uh, DLSS 3, latest generation in DLSS 3 in terms of quality. So FSR 4 will play an a, a very important role. Upscaling is becoming like a standard like it has to be it's a it's it's basically a selling feature now like which brand is offering the best image upscaling technique okay so fsr is the worst in this department so fsr4 is going to be a huge deal if amd is able to you know match at least the latest generation of dlss3 then also i'll consider it as a win because fsr 3.1 at this state is still significantly worse than DLSS's latest, you know, 3.0 latest version, whatever is the latest version for DLSS 3 basically. Okay. So there's that. I think AMD has done a, overall a pretty good job with 9070 XT. We were all very skeptical if AMD is going to squander this opportunity once again, but hopefully this is the time when like AMD finally comes back and starts to gain some mind share. Also, AMD, if you're watching this video, please consider bringing these GPUs to the laptop segment because the laptop segment is just insane. Everything is just dependent on like Nvidia. Nvidia has the whole market on lock. So please, we would love to see if you guys are going to provide this GPU in the form of laptop GPUs. So, yep. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, what do you think about the 97, 9070XT? Are you planning to purchase any one of them? Comment down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.